In this video, we're going to go through how you can show your top end or bottom end values within your reports using ranking. I'm going to show you how you can hook these up into parameters so you can choose between seeing top or the bottom that is ranked, being able to select how many items you want to see within your rank. And I'm also going to show you how you can give your users the ability to choose what's being categorized within your ranking. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So this video is building on top of a previous video that I created before where we covered how you can create uh, dynamic top end values so that you can see your total sales by categories from ranked by top three or top five. Now with this additional feature field parameters, it gives us a lot of possibilities when it comes to being able to dynamically change how we're ranking our products. And the solution that I came up with today is a little bit complicated and a bit convoluted actually, but we're going to break it down into step by step so you can follow along as well. So before we start, let's get acquainted with the data sets that we're working with today, which is the Northwind data set. It's for a fictional company called Northwind that sells grocery goods internationally. We have some data here, like different orders for various products, how much they're ordered, how many, as well as the total sales for each of these orders. We have some order details, like when they were ordered, the product names for each of these orders, and how these products are categorized by. We also have a calendar table here for our time intelligence purposes. And we also have a few pre-created measures that calculates the total sales, as well as counting the number of orders or the quantity of our orders. I've already created a relationship across all of these uh, different tables, but we're not going to focus too much on a relationship. You just need to be aware that there is a relationship amongst all of these. So if we go back to the report view here, and let's start by bringing in our categories into a table, and then we'll bring in total sales. And if I select total sales here to show our values descending, you'll see that now this table gives us a ranking of our categories by total sales being the, the one with the highest sales will be at the top and then the lowest at the bottom. Now in the previous video, we created some uh, ranking to be able to only see the top X values in our table. So we're going to start by recreating what we've done on that video. So we're going to go click and create new measure. I'm going to name this one ranking and we're going to start by using this iterator function rank X. We'll wrap the table with an all and we'll use categories here. Comma, the expression, which is what we want to rank in this ranking, which will be just simply the total sales. Value, we simply ignore. So another comma. And then here we want to sort this ranking by descending which basically means the highest will be number one and then so on and so on. So we'll close this and we'll bring this ranking measure into our table here so you can understand what it does. So you'll see that using this ranking is basically the same as ranking it by total sales here, which gives us one being the highest category two, three, all the way to eight. Now this ranking is what we use to determine how many items we're showing in our table. So for example, so let's modify our measure here and let's add a bit more detail here. So let's say, uh, I'm going to just name this one, uh, ranking, maybe a rank visible doesn't really matter. And then we're going to use return here and we're going to add an if statement to say, if our rank visible is less than or equals to, let's say five, then we won't want to simply just show the total sales of it. And then we're going to skip the false, which just returns nothing. So what it will do, I'm just going to convert this into pounds. So what it will do now is it will simply give us the values for those that are in the top five. 
you will see that condiments is uh, ranked at six, so it gets ignored, which now if you remove total sales from this, basically just removes that category altogether, or not removing it, but making it hidden because there's no results in our ranking. Now, if you change the value from five to three, that will allow you to change how many items are being shown in that table. Now, even further from that, previous video, we also hooked up this static number, number three here, into a numeric fields parameter, which allows your users to select and choose how many are being shown in our table or in your visual. So in this case, we're going to go to modeling, new parameter, numeric range. We're going to name this one uh, ranking uh, option. And we'll say whole number, start from one to 20 increments of one. And then we'll just leave this ticked, hit create, and that will give us the ability to have a slicer here that we can drag, which isn't really hooked up yet. So if we go back to our ranking measure here, we'll change this three into the selected. Uh, this should be a measure here that was created with that ranking option value. So now if you hit that, and as you drag this slider, it will give you fewer and fewer items or more depending on what your users select here in our slider. Pretty easy, right? Now let's move on to controlling how we're ranking this and what we're showing. So at the moment, by default, we're only able to see what is ranked at the top, but not the bottoms. And I mean, if you look at the ranking measure that we've just created, the only difference of how we get the bottom is by simply changing this order here instead of descending is ascending. So we need to do two things. We need to be able to dynamically change how our ranking by category is being ranked by either ascending or descending. And then we need to give our users the ability to use the buttons to be able to toggle which one they want to see top or bottom. So let's start with the latter, which is a pretty easy one to do. So we're going to go to modeling and add a new table. We're going to simply create here, we're going to call it top bottom to keep it simple. And I'm going to use curly brackets to create just some values in this table. So within these double quotations, I'm going to create one top and then with a comma, I'm going to create a bottom. So if I hit enter, just to show you how that looks like, it simply creates a one column table with just two values here, top and bottom. Very, very simple. And the only reason why we're doing that is so that we can have the ability to slice and choose top or bottom here as a selection. I'm going to sort this also by descending. So we have top there, which at the moment is not really hooked up with anything yet. So we're going to create and check what is selected here in this value so that we can choose how we're ranking our categories by. So we're going to go back to our measure here. We're going to create uh, and I'm going to rename this one into uh, top category. And then I'm going to copy the measure that we have created the rank X. I'm going to name another one, create a new variable. I'm going to name it bottom category. And then in this one, we're going to change the sort order into ascending. And then finally, I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call this ranking and I'm going to create an if statement here to check what is being selected in our new top button table, right? So if we say if a selected value in the top bottom value is equals to top. So if top is selected, we're going to use the the sort order on the top category variable. Else we'll use the bottom category variable. So this should be pretty easy. So now we have the ranking. I'm just replacing it in the if statement. So now what it does is it first tries to understand what is selected in our top bottom value. If it's top, 
use the descending order so that we have the highest values on the top. And then if it's not, use and show the lowest value at the top. So if you hit enter, you'll see what I mean. So as you change, so it, you'll see that it will still work. It will still give us the values here. And as we change that to bottom, you'll see that it now gives us the bottom lists of those categories. So what are ranked the lowest. And again, with that, it allows us to dynamically also change how many of those bottom ranking categories we can see. So the last thing that I want to show you is the ability to change what is being ranked here in our visuals. So for example, at the moment, we're only just looking at being able to rank the sales by our categories. But what if you wanted to see the ranking by, let's say, products, not just replacing categories into products, but being able to select and choose which one you want to see in the ranking. How do we do that? Now for that, it's a little bit complicated, but I promise you, um, if you follow what I'm doing, you will be able to do it for yourself as well. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we will need to use field parameters so that we can switch between categories and products. And then with that field parameters, we will use it as a way to determine if the selection is a category or product so that we can switch what we're ranking here in our measure. So instead of categories, we will be ranking products. So let's go through it step by step and let me show you how how to do it. So under modeling, we'll hit new parameter. And then here we'll select fields. And then we'll name this one. We'll just name it breakdown. And then we'll bring in category and product name because we want to be able to select between these two. I'm just going to remove that the names, the front there, just so that the slicer, uh, it doesn't affect your data model. It's just how it's shown on the slicer. We'll hit create here. And then now you have the breakdown so that you're able to choose between each of these breakdown category or product. Now I'm going to select this value here at the top. I'm going to click format painter just so that we don't waste time. So it just makes sure that this uh, slicer is a single select slicer. So now what we want to do is go to our table or whatever it is, it's your, probably your visual. We'll remove the category name in the columns. And instead of category name, we'll use the breakdown, which is the, which is the field parameter that we've just used. Now with category, it still works. As you can see, everything still works. But if you change it now to products, it won't really quite work. So we're going to have to change or modify our measure for that, which is the ranking one. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we're going to create a duplicate of all these variables. Now I'm sure there is a better, uh, more efficient way to do this, but I've tried different ways and it didn't work. So I'm resorting to this because it works. I'm going to show you uh, and we'll, what we're going to do is going to convert these two variables to calculate um, and rank by products. So simply replace any mention of the categories, replace it with products. And then under ranking here, we're gonna just make it a bit tighter. Just have them all in one line because we're gonna need to have two of that and we're gonna have an if statement within an if statement. So if we create the first if statement here, and if we say if the selected value in our breakdown fields, and it's important that you use fields here, contains string. We're going to wrap it into contain string. So what we're looking for is what is selected in our breakdown fields. So if it contains category, then we want to use this if statement to sort or rank by top or bottom category. If it's not, then we want to calculate the ranking by product because that's the only other option that we have. So we're going to use uh, top products here and just change this one to bottom products. So that should be everything that we need to do. So now here we go. So you can see that now with these selections, you're able to choose between different breakdowns by category or by product. It allows you to see the top 
and bottom ranking sales, as well as control how many items you are seeing in your table or visual, which is pretty handy. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to implement dynamic rankings in your Power BI reports and how you can utilize field parameters in order to make and add even more dynamic elements within it. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.